And now that I've done all my trials, I've recorded all of my data, and I've found the averages for my data, it's time to graph. For graphing, we'll want to go back to our tab from Google Drive, and now we want to create a new Google Sheets. In your Google Sheets, you can start anywhere on the sheet, and we want to put our levels of independent variable in a single column. So we can look back at our data table. We have floor, paper, cardboard, and sandpaper. Here we can type floor, paper, cardboard, sandpaper, and then we are only graphing the averages. So the only data that we need are these averages. And as long as I went in order, I can just remember the information, 6, 5, 4, and 2. We can put that here, 6, 5, 4, and 2. And once I have that done, I want to highlight this by clicking and dragging. I'll go to insert, go down to chart. Chart's the word that Google uses for graph. And it'll bring up a chart editor. Now we have to select the type of chart that we want to use. We have a line graph and our bar graph in the first column as the two selections. So let's look at our independent variable. We have floor, paper, cardboard, and sandpaper. Since this is a not a numerical independent variable, it's non-numerical, we want to use a bar graph. So we have a bar graph selected, and then we want to go over to the customization tab. Every graph has to have a title. If you need to relook at yours, you can scroll back up on your document, or if we just simply want to copy and paste this in, which is what I will do, control C, and here to paste, control V, and when you click out of the box, you'll see that your title shows up above your graph. Next, we can move down to the legend, and since we're only graphing our averages in our experiment, we don't need a legend. So we'll take this, click, and we'll turn our legend to none, and that will make our legend disappear on the right side of our graph. Um, then as we scroll down, you can see font and background. We can change if we choose to do so. We might later. We come down, and the important sections are axis, for our axis labels. And it will start on horizontal, and our horizontal axis label will be our independent variable. So we want to put our independent variable from our title in here as type of surface. And when you click outside of that box, your independent variable will show up as a label underneath your graph. And now we need to add a label for our dependent variable. So what we need to do is go back to axis, click the arrow to pull down, and we'll go to left vertical. Left vertical is this side. That's our dependent variable. And now we need to put the label for our dependent variable on this line. So what we actually graphed was the average amount of And we need to have our units on this as well. So this was measured in seconds, the lowercase s in parentheses. Uh, later on, we could change the font style for that as well. If we click outside, our label shows up. We can now continue to scroll down. Right now, we can skip all that stuff. We'll come down here. If we so choose, we could add data labels, a value, so we knew which value each column was at. And since we're Republic Middle School, I'm going to go ahead and change our colors around a little bit. And we'll scroll all the way back up here. And I'm going to change our background to orange. That looks a lot more like us. And I want to hit Insert. So now I have this nice graph. Um, since I forgot to earlier, I'm going to title my sheet example graph 
And what we want to do is click on this small arrow on our graph once it's finished. We want to copy chart, and then we can move back to our lab report. Scroll down to our graph section, and we can paste that in. And there it comes. It's very important that you do note that once you have copied and pasted, changes that I make to this data on our sheet, on our Google Sheet, will not show up on this graph. Okay, so if we want to change this data at all, we have to recopy and paste this graph into the document. And now we are ready to move on to our conclusion.